In the last video on soil, we explored how soil forms the top layer of much of the Earth's land surface and its crucial role in supporting life. We learned that most plants depend on soil for water, minerals, and nutrients, essential for photosynthesis, the process that produces oxygen and fuels plant growth. This not only sustains the plants themselves, but also provides energy for other organisms. We also discussed how soil is a rich environment teeming with life, including small animals, fungi, and microorganisms. Furthermore, we examined the main components of soil, small rock particles, water, air spaces, and humus, the decomposed remains of dead plants and animals that enrich the soil. In today's video, we'll take a closer look at different types of soil and their compositions using a magnifying glass and a digital microscope. Let's dive in and discover the fascinating details hidden within the soil beneath our feet. We'll be looking at the four main types of soil we discussed earlier. Sand, clay, silt, and loam. Here, we have each soil type that has been dried. Observing soil in a dry form will allow us to better see its composition. Let's start by labeling each dish. Now, let's get a closer look at each type of soil by observing each dish of soil using a magnifying glass. Use a chemical spatula or similar tool to move the particles around. Record your observations as you go. To zoom in even closer, you can use a microscope. In this case, we're using a digital microscope with a viewing screen. Place each dish of soil on the microscope stage. Make focus adjustments and observe. You can use a finer tool, like a needle, to move the particles around. Make observations as you go. In making close observations, we can see that the composition of each soil type is different. To finish up, let's take a look at the general composition of each soil type. Sand has big particles, like the sand you find at the beach. These big particles mean that sand can't hold onto water very well because the water just drains right through. This is why sand is often dry. But the big spaces between the particles do allow a lot of air to move through. Sand does not contain much humus. Clay has very small particles. These tiny particles pack closely together. This makes it good at holding water, but it doesn't let air through easily. Because of this, clay can be hard for plant roots to move through. Like sand, clay does not contain much humus. Silt has qualities that sit between those of sand and clay. Silt particles are finer than sand, but bigger than clay, making silt smooth to the touch. 
this medium-sized particle composition allows silt to hold water more than sand. Silt also has some humus, which provides minerals and nutrients for plants. Loam is a mix of sand, silt, and also some clay particles. This gives it the best qualities for growing plants. It holds moisture, but also drains well, so it's not too wet or too dry. Loam often contains lots of humus, which helps the soil hold on to nutrients and moisture, and it makes the soil very good for growing plants. Don't forget to subscribe!